Welcome to the live stream. Let me um, check my audio. I always do that. Okay. Test. Seem to be better. What's going on, y'all? Appreciate everybody for stopping in. What's up, Encore? KPKP Angels, good to see you guys. It's our Sunday live stream. Appreciate everybody for stopping in. Jim O'Reilly in the house. Big shout out to my sponsors, Hanlon, Tremec, Team Z Viking, Stiflers, McLeod, just to name a few. Uh, appreciate everybody who, um, you know, Anderson Ford Motorsports, TI Dino, Super Coops Unlimited. Appreciate you guys for what we do here on the channel. Anyways, uh, you guys see it behind me. We got like got a, got a couple things to talk about tonight. Um, we got a little motivated today. It was nice and cold, but it was like sunny out here in Ohio, so it looked like it was seventy degrees outside, but it was like thirty-five or forty. But we decided to uh, pull Dad's car out. We had to get we had to get the, a couple things behind the car, so I just decided to pull it out, clean it off. You know, we haven't really touched that car in like over a year. Uh, pretty much last time that car got messed with, I think Cousin Paul was popping willies in it and shit. So it is what it is. But anyway, I got a couple things to talk about tonight. We've got a cam chop stuff going coming up. You know, what, what you working on? You got to talk to me. You know, we're going to be talking about what you guys are working on, what I'm working on. You know, just catch up things here on the channel. A um, couple of videos I got shooting that's coming out this week. Doing pretty good with the uh, 387 stuff that we've had come out with the Mac Pro, uh, the, the Flow Pass or whatever that is, or whatever. But uh, what's up, Spring Mike? What's up, Jimmer Willie? Midnight Fox, Classic Car. Good to see you guys. Again, I just appreciate you guys, you know, talking some shit with me on a, on a Sunday night. I appreciate everybody who comes in here and, and uh, you know, enjoys the channel. Anyways, what y'all working on? Talk to me. Today? We was working on, um, well, we found a starter solenoid that was loose in my dad's car. That was kind of, I got, got stuck over at the uh, the gas station. We, you know, we, we did a video shaking the dad's car down, had a couple things come up in the video. And it was just like, you know, it's it's Murphy's Law that I, you know, I, I it needs fuel. I put a little bit of race fuel in it and put a bunch of 93 pump gas in it and just get stuck at the station. So you'll see that in the video. It's crazy. Nine inch gear change. Okay. I don't think I've ever get, I don't think I've ever changed gears in a nine inch, to be honest with you. Isn't that from the front? Don't you pull it, pull it everything from the front? I mean, it, it only makes sense, right? Got my 89 notch in the garage. We just went after a, a notch back this past weekend. Um, yeah, we should be, uh, that's one of the videos that we're going to be showing this week it's kind of like it was just sitting just you know it's one of those uh what do you call it just one of those regretful pies we pulled one of them home today, or, uh, yesterday and uh i'm currently working on putting the engine diaper on and switching the intake manifold injectors over to you. You're working on that right now? Big shout out to Hand the Motorsports, number one sponsor on the channel. Good friend of mine, Andrew. Uh, Andrew. I appreciate him and everything that he does for the community. But um, we do have a – I got all my shirts out that we had to do for merch, and I also got the banners out that I was owing some of, like, I think uh, Fox Body John, 860 Fox. Uh, OG Superfly. There's a, a number of members and stuff here on the channel that I had to get shit out to. So um, apologize for it taking so long. But we got a couple things uh, in the mail here today. We're going to be doing footage on. I'll uh, show you guys here in the channel. Um, but I'm pretty excited to have Dad's car out in about like <laughs> we started it up, and it was like uh, like the oil, like the oil and the lifters were weren't even pumped up. Like so, it was wrapping just a little bit, you know. And, you know, I could probably put another shim underneath or, or go with a little bit longer of a push rod and get away with it. But I don't know. It was kind of uh, kind of crazy. Now, if you remember correctly, that's a stock bottom end GT40 build. Uh, we built that here on the uh, channel, flipped the pistons, zero deck the block. 
uh, put GT40 P heads on it. Uh, one of probably three or four of the same style uh, engines that we've built here on the channel. Just really budget to, mo to, to be honest with you. And then we did a homemade turbo kit, like all the extra pieces that we had and we scavenged from other kits and from stuff that we've gotten from friends. Like basically we made that kit with like Amazon piping. It was kind of crazy, but uh, maybe we might revisit that. Maybe I might put it out on Facebook or something. I don't know. But if you remember, we went to, we got two GT40 intakes sitting over here that we were going to do that GT40, the great debate of which one made the most power. And that's still on the table right now, but I think we're going to switch the, uh, we got some shit coming up that I want to switch on dad's car. The speed density and turbo and FMU, 19 pound injector, 24 pound injectors, all that shit works. But that's like 90s technology, like ramping up the fuel pressure. And we talked about that on the channel. We actually had a couple of videos about it a year or so, a year and a half ago, and how it actually worked. And for those that don't know what an FMU is, it's a fuel management uh, unit that basically backs up the fuel in your fuel rails and forces it through your injectors or whatever. But um, is the on three kit decent? Got one on the shelf thinking about putting it on. Yeah, so on three has been around for probably what 16, 17, 20 years. Oh seven, oh eight. I got one of their first kits. Um, I've actually owned probably four, five, six kits. We're a dealer with them. Um, it's a good kit. I'm honestly considering, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm honestly considering grabbing one of their hot sides or one of their kits for the the trooper coop and just going with a single turbo instead of a twin. And just going with something that's already prefabbed. But then again, the other side of me says, well, it only take us a good weekend to kind of pipe something together with twins. I don't know. We're kind of, I showed uh, Andrew Hanlon uh, some of my ideas of a guy's uh, thread with the twin turbo stuff that I'd like to do. So to answer your question, it's a decent kit. I've only ever had an issue with some of the wastegates just not working properly. Um, that was, like I said, it's been, been years, been years that uh, i've messed with them so um, as far as the the wastegate and blah blah they're probably a lot better than they were so what's up sean 5.0 good to see you bro currently finishing up the conduit tubing the con the tube front end okay installing a canvas top is this the it's the worth installing a canvas top is it worth the hassle and the money for glass or the plastic back window now I don't know. I would put the glass in. I mean, the plexiglass, what I don't like about the plexiglass, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about a convertible. What I don't like about the, the, the plexiglass is it just gets, it gets, you know, fogged up over time and then it ends up just being, I don't know, like cracked up from the cold or whatever. You know what I mean? So can I use an Explorer? Uh, can I use an Explorer transmission in my AO? Can I use an Explorer what for my AOD? No. What's up, Jim? Jim Hilt. Good to see him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We cleaned it up today, MJP. It needed a bath really bad. Uh, we took it around the block, got stuck at a gas station. It's just some of the gremlins. We'll get it fixed. What's up, cousin Paul in the house? Good to see you, brother. Hey, it's the white car. I got big shout to to Mike Johnson. He uh, four one seven Fox. He made this hat. You can see it's got the skinnies and the SVO hood and no Ford uh, symbol in the front. So he made this hat one of one for me in the white car. So he also made this tumbler. Four one seven Fox. Mike Johnson. Good good dude, man. Go check out his website. He does he does merch and he does uh, hats. He does all kind of shit. So what's up, pimp? Good to see you. What's up, fat boy Fox in the house? Good to see you guys. Good to see some of my uh, it's my Sunday usuals. High proof. So I'm thinking about getting a Fox, maybe an SN95. Your budget 387 was budget considering it had GT40 pistons and heads. Since I don't have nothing at all, do you that still be budget or coyote? Okay, so we talked about this last week. I'm going to be honest with you. If you can get a coyote for a thousand or fifteen hundred, just go with that. Um, when you start getting into push rod stuff and budget stuff like three eighty seven, if you don't really know what you're looking at, uh, I tell everybody: if you want to build the same motor we did, do yourself a favor and just build a three ninety three. 
you know, just by getting the dish pistons and having the valve reliefs in those pistons, you know, you can still use the stock rods and it still uses the same crankshaft that I bought. But you would just get pistons specifically, just bore it 30 over, get a fresh bore in it, get a good compression in it, put whatever cylinder head you want on it. Like I'm kind of limited on what cylinder heads I can put on the 387. It's already raspy at 12 to 1 right now. And we're about to put, you now that's one of the topics we're going to be talking about tonight on live because we'll be chopping some trees down soon. And, you know, I just realized too, speaking of chopping trees down, how loud my damn fuel pump is. If you guys watch the video from this past week, like it's crazy. Like here, let me bring it up. Absolutely nuts. You hear that thing? That's gonna kind of mess up a little bit of my muffler video. I'm not gonna be able to get a really good solid idle like that's a damn accurate. I wanted to show you guys, I mean that's loud as hell. Yeah, it's singing its own tune for sure. You know, it makes 400 wheel. I'm happy with it. It is what it is. We had a good time with it. <clears throat> but, uh, hey, I appreciate it. Matt Hopkins. Uh, he is a new member of the channel. If you guys are curious, get a little exclusive content to the channel. Guys in the green are my members, and we do talk quite often. Uh, they help me decide some of the stuff here on the channel, too. So, appreciate you guys all in green. And what the classic uh, view? What fluid do you recommend in the Tremec 3550? Um, Dex 3. I think that's old school enough to just stay with Dex 3 uh, red, which is, I think, like automatic transmission fluid now. So, Are you going to De Detroit in July? I am. We will be at Motor City Fox Fest. There's not really any, like, like there was pits this past weekend. So if any of you guys went to pits, you know, hit me up here in the chat. Let me know what you guys thought of it. Looks like it was a pretty good crowd and pretty good thing. But, you know, I'm so busy with racing anymore and, and promoting and, and doing all that stick shift shit with stick shift friends that and on top of work and my kids, like I, I could, you know, I wouldn't have been able to go to Chocolate Fox if, if, if she even had it. Uh, it's going to be rough for me to even pencil in Carlisle this year. But Ford Takeover is another event that I'm going to be racing at. Plus, it's kind of a laid back event for like, you know, just kind of chilling and hanging out and, and seeing some of the subscribers and peoples and stuff. But I mean, it is what it is. Um, I think Motor City Fox Fest is what he's talking about. That'll be the pretty much the only uh, the only kind of sit down, relax, put my booth up and, and see people. Um, and it's it's in, I think, the first week, second week of July. I can't remember. You are welcome. If you go with the Coyote, I mean, it depends. You can get a Coyote for decently cheap, but consider, I mean, it depends on what you get. Like a Gen 1, you could probably get for 1500 if you look. But I'm going to be honest with you. Um, if you're going to do a 351, just have somebody do a 393 for you or a 408. Nothing wrong with a, a stock bottom end GT40 302 build like we got back here in Dad's car. Ain't nothing wrong with that either. So I'll see you in Detroit. I seen you there last year, but I didn't get a chance to talk to you. Yeah, man, come on up and say hello. That's what I'm there for, fellas. I'm there to, you know, talk some Fox Body shit with some Fox Body friends. I mean, it is what it is. We may even, I think there's a no prep that night on Friday night in Milan. I want to say the stick ship, the stick ship series is on, fr on Friday night. Uh, I could be wrong, but we'll probably end up just cruising. I want to get the black car ready. Like, it's kind of ready now, but, like, we got some stuff we got to do to it this week that's going to be on video, like, clearancing 351 problems. There's like actually two of them, two or three of them that I'm going to point out in this video. So it's going to be kind of like a informational, probably a lame video nobody's going to watch anyways. But, you know, it, if you're getting ready to put a 351 or a 95 deck motor in your car, you may want to pay attention to that one that's coming out this week. So, um, But I'd like to cruise the black car, uh, like, what was it Wood, Woodward? Is that right? Or... Tra tra traverse traverse what what <laughs> i'm i'm just butchering it i don't mean to there's a there's a road up there that me and because me and watts are going to be there me and dan watts um because dan's going to be in the tremec booth and i'm going to have my own booth probably next to tremec or near it 
just much like we did last year. Next, probably next to the Stiflers, I'd imagine. And uh, we're just gonna we're gonna go up the day before, and you know, probably get an Airbnb or a freaking hotel or whatever, and we'll go out cruising a little bit, just kind of hang out and, and see some friends up in Detroit. So um, I think isn't there isn't there a Detroit Fox Body Club up there? I think is it Fox Body D's got one. Is that right? So I'd like to see some of those guys, hang out with them, say hello. What's up, Neil from Toronto? Good to see you, brother. Appreciate you stopping in. What's up, Dan and guys? I'm working on stock fuel rails hose leak. Anyone have any ideas what to use? Fuel injection hose and clamps? Yeah. Uh, when you when you get into the plastic hosing, because you got to like melt that shit. So like you got to be very careful because obviously you don't want to blow yourself up. In order to repair, you must be you you must be talking about the end pieces, the plastic thing that goes inside the rubber coating or whatever. Yeah, just get some fuel injection, five sixteenths and quarter inch fuel injection hose. Get get a, get a couple of good clamps and you know put the ends back on the other side and be done with it. It'll be fine. You know what I mean? Um, you could even wrap it in you know some flame proof stuff. That'd be all right. Yeah, Detroit Fox body. I'm in it. Yeah, good people. Woodward, what's the what's the starts with a T? Telegraph, that's it. BBQ five O Telegraph, that's it. We were actually on Telegraph last year when we went up there, and I told Dan, I'm like, bro, we're gonna cruise this next year when we come up, man. It'll be a it'll be a riot, you know. Motor City, baby, that's where that shit was born. Damn, damn credit union takes my damn money every month. I mean, my truck payment ain't cheap. They be taking my shit. They, they be taking my shit with a smile. <laughs> What's a good piston for boost on a 347? Um, I, I like Wiseco. Uh, we we actually coat our pistons now, so I'll buy a set of pistons and have them coated uh, just for boost. But you know the coating's like an extra 200 bucks or something. Uh, have you, I've ran JE with no issues. Um, hell, I've ran Speed Pros with no issues. It depends on how much boost and how much power you're looking for. 347. I'm. Um, I'm assuming that's a stock bottom end production block. Okay, so they are they are also doing a cruise to Hell, Michigan on Friday, I believe. What's that? Who's doing a cruise? Hey, Neo, met you in Gainesville. Look forward to FTO. Hell yeah, brother. Um, so that people don't know what FTO is. It's Ford takeover. So we're going to be running a six shift shoot out there. Got 32 cars. I'm going to have to start updating that very soon. But I got a no prep coming up in a couple of weeks. I got to get ready for, which brings me to one of the problems that we have. Like on my thumbnail, um, we have we found suspension pieces on the floor, like from my white car. So we're going through the whole car. I bought some pieces here that I'm going to show you guys when we get to that discussion. We're going to I'm, I'm going to actually apply it to some of the fox, you know, the stock fox body stuff. So it, it's not just race shit. This isn't just about race shit. You know, this is stuff that you need to be looking for on your stock box body or even your project that you just bought. So we're going to point some shit out and I'm going to show you. You coming down to London, Kent? Uh, uh, I am not. I actually made a, um, I made plans prior to that for an event that's actually on that same day, April 13th though. So I would have locked in a long time ago if that would have been the case. But there's a lot of good, a lot of good stick shift shit going on that night, man. I'll tell you that for sure. Smurfing in the house, good to see you. You say the, the organizers, you're talking about like stifflers and like the people that are organizing the Motor City Fox Fest. Is that what you're talking about on Friday night? Because I know that last time we were at a for those of you guys that know what I'm talking about, it's July 13th is the Motor City Fox Fest in Detroit. And what makes this, this, this a little bit special is the fact that it's in the Ford headquarters. Like, it's in their headquarters, the backyard. It's where the shit all came from. So, you know, we were lucky enough last year, I say we, but the people that were there had, were lucky enough last year to be able to park there. It rained like hell, but we all still had a good time. You know, Ford was very, you know, strict about, you know, don't be doing no burnouts and don't be doing stupid shit. And everybody did a really good job with that. A lot of Fox bodies there, a lot of good friends got to see some, some, some good subscribers and some, uh, you know, some other content creators that day. So it was really cool. 
I mean, I look forward to seeing it again. I, you know, just, just the nostalgia or the, uh, just the experience of being at the Ford headquarters was good enough for me. So diamond two one six. Okay. Told no good. Okay. Anything I can do to get anything I can do to get 10 to 20 horsepower back. Okay. What did you ask? Skinny J? What did, where did you lose 20, 10 to 20 horsepower? What's up two valve. Good to see you. Booked my room for Ford Takeover a couple days ago. Can't wait to see you there. Hell yeah. We're going to listen. Ford Takeover is going to be nuts. I got 32 cars coming. I got some of the biggest hitters in the in the south and the north on the eastern coast coming to, to run some eighth mile shit with us. We got, you know, we're going to fill the field up with 32. We got five grand to give away. The way it sits right now, we're going to give like uh, the transmission to the winner, which is worth three grand which is from Tremec. We're giving away a TKX at that race. We're going to give like 2,500 to the runner up. We're going to give like a thousand to the semis, which is really nice because we're paying back some big money to all four spots. Um, what else are we doing? We're giving the winner of the loser bracket because there's a second chance loser bracket first round only. They're going to get the McLeod RXT HD certificate, which is worth 1,500. And then we're going to pay the runner up too in the loser bracket. So six people of the 32 are going to get paid and they're going to get paid pretty significant since it's only 150 buy-in. So we're going to have a good time. You know, it's, it's an eighth mile. Uh, I'm even thinking about pushing it to no time to be honest with you, but uh, I don't know. We can do whatever we want, but outside of that, it's going to be like a, a reconditioned Jackson dragway. And, you know, there's other stuff going on along with the stick shit. Plus you'd be able to, we're going to be, we're going to be racing all night long. Like we're gonna start stick shift shit at like four thirty, so it's not like last year where we had everything done by one o'clock. I mean, people could come in and relax and enjoy the the day, and then you know, you know, we start we start you know banging some gears later on that night. So it's the only shootout that's going on that night, unfortunately, because we couldn't get a uh, we were gonna do a coyote shootout too, but we couldn't get scales. So maybe next year. What's up, baby? Hey, Neil, are you going to the booth? in Columbus. I am not, I'm going to have, I'm going to be in Columbus. I I never miss a swap meet. I've been going to swap meets in Ohio for many, many years. And I always told myself and I told the vendors and the friends that guys, some of the best friends that I have that still call me today with car parts and whatever we haggle, we trade, we do all kinds of shit because we all have way too many car parts to even have. But like my buddy, Tom, down in Virginia and Dale. And, you know, we talk to people in Columbus. I talked to people in Georgia and they all come up and, you know, they, they all go to this spring swap meet and they go to the Carlisle swap meets and some of the best, you know, knowledgeable people, some of the best stories, you know, some of the best times I've had with experiences with swap meets have been at Columbus. So long story short, I always try to uh, go down there and, and, and be part of it, you know, at least, you know, buy into it and, you know, buy some stuff because I'm sure there's going to be shit there for me to buy. <clears throat> Is it worth putting GT40 P heads on a 351? Sure. Um, Got to be careful, though, because compression starts to creep up on you. So GT40, to be honest with you, 351 roller in a Lightning had GT40 heads on it. Anyways, they weren't P's, though. So they were a little bit, P's are a little bit less comp or a little bit more compression. but. You know, that'd be a little badass little build if you guys were to find a stock bottom end roller 351 and throw some P heads on it. You know what I mean? It's not bad for budget. Get much snow this uh, past spring. Can't wait. Yeah, no kidding. It was 70 degrees last Saturday. It's like 30 today. Yeah, we definitely had a good time in Motor City for sure. It would be cool if they had a stock 5.0 block dyno shootout. It would be. They've done that before. They've had a uh, shootout to where uh, they had a challenge to make 400 wheel on a stock block. 400 crank. I don't remember. What was it? Y'all know what I'm talking about? It was years ago. What's up, Bama 5.0? Good to see you. Appreciate you stopping in, my man. 
Columbus Swap Meet is where I met, first met you. Had to be at least – it's been 10 years. I used to set up a booth there and just sell some of the extra shit that I had for many years. And it just got to the point to where, you know, hauling the stuff down there. I mean, you, you, the spots are like 100 bucks a piece now. I needed like four spots. There's 400. You figure at least two hotel nights because you got Friday and Saturday. That's another – I mean, I brought my cousin with me that works with me, so, you know, he would get his own hotel room. I mean, that's 1000 in hotel or 800 in hotel. I mean, you can't even get a cheap hotel down there because everybody already got them. So, I mean, it ended up being like – plus the fuel, it ended up being like 1500 a weekend, and it's just like, you know, I didn't bring that much good stuff to – you know, I would be spending so much money just to be there and be part of the vendor versus – you know, making money. Now, if you, if I had a big load of stuff that I wanted to off, that's worth good money. I mean, you almost have to give the shit away versus just selling it on marketplace. But that's the problem is, you know, things like Facebook marketplace and, you know, some of these other websites, especially Facebook marketplace have just made it. So you swap meets were almost half irrelevant, but I'll be honest with you guys, you need to go to a swap meet. If you see one Columbus, one has two a year, Carlisle one, it's nothing like an experience that you would have on my marketplace. I could promise you that for sure. <clears throat> I'm getting mixed info on pinion angles. What do you recommend on a street car with solid bushings, upper and lower control arms? I don't know. I would probably start around two degrees. If that's what you're asking. Yeah, I know. I, I heard. So big shout to Ron priest. He, uh, our friends here on the channel, uh, Tony and Tess, you know, AV boys and Miss Midnight Maverick had a gray mare giveaway. Um, and I think Team Z was part of that, which is also a sponsor here on the channel. So big shout out to all those guys. They gave away a gray mare package, which had like a bunch of really nice shit in it, suspension wise. And our guys, right, a guy right here on the channel, Ron Priest, as soon as they said it, I'm like, son of a bitch. There it is. He, uh, you know, he's a top fan over on Facebook on our, on our business page. And he's always, uh, always in our lives and premieres. And I appreciate you, Ron. And you know, you're good, dude, good, dude, nothing good to say, but nothing but good stuff's to say. Congratulations, brother. Internet killed the swap meet. In my opinion, it used to be so great. Bought a hood every year from Jim. <laughs> yes. Is that the, the, you know, that was funny because there was somebody years ago. I remember this experience I had with the, um, with the hoods that it was the, the boss hoods. They had them all lined up against my table in the back. And one of them fell over and, and cracked and broke. And the guy next to me had a bunch of parts from like PA Pittsburgh or something. And he only had like one spot and he bought it like last minute came in like last minute. And he, uh, and he actually knocked it over. They were drinking and shit. And I'm just like, he actually knocked it over and they were mad at me. Like the whole weekend boss was, because they thought I broke the damn hood. And I told him, I was like, I don't. Eventually, the guys next to me event eventually ended up, hey, I broke it. And it was, a you know, whatever. They didn't have to actually pay for it. But, you know, it was kind of a shitty experience. I never forget that. Man got the car, dynoed finally. You probably see my comment in the other video. Had it done at D&D. Hell yeah, Donnie Walsh is good people. Want to take it out, but the... Uh, it's 25 degrees out. <laughs> it's probably snowing up there in Michigan. I remember the swap meets at Ford uh, Ford Motorsports Nationals at Maple Grove. Good times. Hell yeah. Always good. Uh, just bought a dash from you. Looking forward to installing it. Keep up the fantastic work. I appreciate you, Frog Man. Appreciate you. I always, uh, Cousin Paul's here in the channel. He always does a really nice job with helping me restore those dashes. I mean, he, we are, like if it's cracked, we don't want it. Like that's, I, I look for these parts, scavenge all over the place for these parts that aren't broken. You know, the, the knee bolsters and the, and, and, the, and the dash speakers and stuff. It's what we do, baby. So anyways, um, we're going to give away this Tremec banner this weekend. Now this is hundred percent. The last one I have, unless Hanlon will finally send me one, but um, we ended up uh, having this. This is another one that wasn't claimed, but I remember the people that actually emailed me. They um, I pinned their email and made sure that they had the right one. 
So sent two stiplers ones, a Tremec one, and I think a Hanlon one up this weekend. So we're going to be giving this away one more shop swag. So hopefully I can get some more. Um, I know I got a bunch coming from Tremec, got some coming from Stiplers, and I haven't heard back from a couple of the other ones, but I'd like to continue doing what we do there. I mean, they're like 10, 12 bucks to send, but they're worth it. You know, it's, it's for the channel. What's going on with dad's car? Nothing. Be honest with you guys, it's starting right up. We actually have a cutoff switch. My dad's got parasitic loss. If you guys don't know what that is, like, you know, we don't know if it's the visor light or the rear hatch light, but something something's drawing power out of the battery. But we actually stuck a cutoff switch on it, and it works really well for the last, you know, three or four years. It saved the battery. We just cut the switch off. So... On the oil dipstick on a 302, is there a there a ring? Yeah. On the oil dipstick on a 302, is there an O-ring where it goes into the block? No. There's like a, I don't know. You, you just put it into the block. It's got a like a little step to it where you can, it only goes in so far. <clears throat> so, I got a non-crack console from the junkyard. Like today. So let me show you. Uh, first thing we were talking about on the thumbnail was cam chop. Now y'all know, like we made 400 wheel in the black car. Well, we made really close to it, but it's okay. We we're heading to a dyno jet soon. Uh, well, you guys will see what I'm talking about. Um, we're gonna we're gonna make some runs on another dyno as well, just to kind of test a couple other things out. But the 387 wasn't really meant to be anything special it was just meant to be kind of thrown together to see if the shit even worked but we did do our due diligence with clearancing with especially with the bearings um and making sure that the, the motor was balanced and shit we put a b31 cam in it because we already had it and you know everyone's like well what why'd you put that camshaft in it? guys we weren't we weren't planning to be an a anything like the 387 was supposed to get budget set of heads that we bought aluminum um, you know, it wasn't supposed to get the, the, the trick flow box R we were supposed to put like a track heat on it. Cause we already had another extra lower, but it ended up putting the 408 ones on there. And that's where this intake came from is that one's going on the 408 with an elbow, what, whatever. So we didn't expect to do what we've done with it, but considering we already had E85 in the black car, we didn't really care too much about compression. So we got to the point now where we're just, you know, chasing some NA numbers and we're going to leave the car alone. Uh, we're going to do some muffler videos. Next one up is the Flowmaster, but I think I'm going to do the cam change first because I would like to hear what the cam says through the mufflers with the Mac mufflers too. So um, anyways, without further ado, we ended up buying one. So a special shout to Anderson Motorsports. They're always helping me out with, on you know, you know, we bought the camshaft, but... You know, he helped me decide on it quite a bit. And they're good people to deal with. And Donnie's helped us out. And it's given, it's given away thousands of dollars worth of shit here on the channel. So I do want to make a special shout to Donnie B over there at Anderson for what he does for the channel, not for me. You know, so I'm sure we can, we'll talk more about that later. But got us another camshaft, another, another hit stick, baby. Figured this one. This one will get us close to. This one will definitely get us close to the piston the valve for sure. So that's what we got. Just like we talked about, B B four fifty one. We think the duration will be perfect. I think with the twisted wedge uh, trick flow heads, you know. It's got a good, it's got a good lift with it. I think with the uh, the way we have the twisted wedge set up, we had about one hundred twenty five thousandths clearance on the intake valve. Uh, exhaust valve was like a mile away because just the way, just because of the way the valve sits on the head, it's not an inline head, so um, we didn't have a, have to worry about the exhaust valve. So we think we can, you know, slip this camshaft in. We'll check some clearances, and if it's good, we're just going to send it. It's gonna, it's gonna chop though for sure. Now we didn't valve. Uh, one of the things I do regret on the 387 build, it, it was super budget. I mean, I had pistons laid over in a damn box. You know, the rods and the block we reused from the junkyard motor that we bought. And we just, 
bought a $300 crankshaft. So the only thing we actually did was had to mock the motor up two or three times to make sure that the piston skirts cleared. Uh, we had to, we had to clearance some piston skirts. We had to balance the motor, which you do anyways with any other motor. Anyway, one of the things I really wish I would have took my time to do is, is uh, uh, fly cutting the pistons. I should have done that. So if somebody is out there that's planning on doing that same engine at some point, do yourself a favor. If you're going to do the stock pistons, just fly cut them. Just whatever. Just take the time and fly cut them. Be done with it. That way you're not worried about it. It's going to be some good compression. The bad badass little motor that you can you can make a couple times. Good board. So that's what we got. B451, 232, 240 duration, um, 576 lift. The 112 load set. It's got five degrees advanced built in. That's what Donnie said. So we'll see the battery drain. Uh, yeah, we've, we've replaced some of the, uh, some of the, the bulbs in our car recently. So it's just, we can't figure it out. I mean, it's not that we can't, we just don't, we haven't taken a lot of time to try to figure it out. Can't wait to hear the Mac mufflers with a cam. So yeah, like I said, you know, it was B31 cam, small cam. We were going to stick an on three kit. We got, two or three turbo kits um, that we've taken off other cars. And plus the one that I've taken off the black car, I got the B and G kit and one and a half on three kits. But one of them's like a nine, five deck. And the other one's like a nine, eight, two deck. But like, I don't want to boost the black car, at least not right now. If not ever. <clears throat> Try and catch up. I've got a 351 in that I currently stock non-roller engine. I'm planning on pretty tight budget build. I want aluminum heads, drill and tap the block to convert to rollers. 393, hell yeah. And 302 pistons with stock rods. What are your thoughts on Flowtech, Speedmaster, and AFR? If I had to choose any of those, I'd probably choose Speedmaster. And if you're going to choose the one, choose the Speedmaster that's got the uh, like 72cc chambers. And, I mean, unless you're going to run E85. I mean, it depends on what fuel you're going to run. I think it's 70, 70 cc's. I don't remember. So, but that's what we're talking about with the thumbnail, with the cam chop. We got that in the mail. I haven't actually put that in the video yet, but you know, on live stream, you always just be giving that shit up anyways. It's not a big deal. Um, so I don't think we're going to actually change any of the lifters. I guess there's these... Uh, I don't even know what they're called, tappets? I guess there's these like wing nut style magnets that you can stick down in each cylinder head or each push rod hole and bring the lifter up so you can change the cam without taking the intake off. You know, I do have an, I do have an extra set of limited travel lifters I might put in though too. So there's a, you know, I don't know. What do you guys think? You think I just stay with the lifters that I got or you think I should put some limited travels in it? I think limited travels will at least tighten up that. I don't know. For sure. Donnie B is the man. Does very well. Hey, Neo, is it okay to run a 105 millimeter poly elbow with a 90 millimeter active fat throttle? Ball? Yes. You'll be fine. As long as it doesn't, I, I take that back. How big's your opening on your intake? Or is that the Holly elbow is the carb DFI style intake, right? Single plane? If that's the case, you're cool. But if you're if you have an upper intake like an EFI style intake and it's like 90, you don't want that turbulence, especially on naturally aspirated. It's all gotta be even. You can't. Like when you do naturally aspirated, the minimum you want to do, if you go up to like a 70 millimeter throttle body, probably want to go to like a three and a half inch Anderson pipe or something because you need the CFM. Um, you know, that'll actually cover you up to almost, I think, 80, 75. Um, you start getting into the four inches when you get into like the 90, 85, 90 millimeter throttle bodies. I'm talking about Fox body style EFI upper lower intakes. Now, I think he's talking about Carver EFI with the elbow. So. Should the cam torque converter be close in an automatic 
that is definitely a question for the converter place. I'm definitely not. A, I, I, I don't I don't like to give any sort of. Like advanced knowledge. I mean, I know AODs and I know C4 just as well, but when it comes to converter stuff, you know, I'm not a subject matter expert for sure. Dave, I have a set of Speedmaster heads. They are good. NA for a couple of years and now boosted. What's the most power you could get through a 302 with the GT40 heads intake? And I put, um, what did we put? I don't think I have that that video i don't even think i can bring that video up we we went 550 602 on 15 pounds on the block that's split over there and then we went 582 630 to the wheels on gt40 gt40 p heads stock bottom end flip pistons uh, that was in the blue car um that's i mean we ran Black car went 10 0 or 10 teens at 138, 37 with that combo. And you know it weighs like 3,400 pounds. So what, what really kind of kills me is, is, is talking about the old shit that I've done years ago. And I did it in a heavy ass GT. I didn't realize how heavy it actually was running it all these years. Imagine if that had just been a straight up coupe. Damn. Might have got some better times out of it. What did Rich say? Do you need different injectors and fuel pump for 85? Absolutely. You need about 30 to 35%. And that's what Pimp just said. Like when you get a Holly tune, like you just take your fuel table and just multiply, you know, multiply it by 0.3, like the whole thing. Because E85 burns, yeah, it's about 30 to 35% more. <laughs> What year is the car with the parasitic draw? 88. So, what else we got going on? GT40 budget stuff. Okay, so there's a reason why dad's car is here in the shop. It's been like a year since we've actually monkeyed with it at all. Um, like I had mentioned earlier in the chat, it's a GT40 flip piston junkyard. Pretty much everything in that motor is no different than the three or four motors that we've done here on the channel. It's, it's, it's all Ford parts. Uh, it's got an actual ca uh, Cobra camshaft, which is from a 93, which is the GT stamp on the uh, lobe. Um, it's got Cobra 93 rockers on it, which is the just the Crane 172s. Um, the only thing in there that's not factory is the rings and the head studs. Obviously, some gaskets or whatever, but uh, GT40 shit still, you know, you can make, we're going to make, uh, I know we've been talking about this for several years. You know, what I did with dad's car with the speed density is pretty cool. We, we showed that by mixing and matching parts, you can, you can make a speed density system, make six or seven, eight pounds of boost. Problem with that is there's no correction involved. So it's kind of dangerous. So we're kind of past that now. We, we proved our point that it could work, but now it's on to what's next. So we pulled dad's car out, cleaned it up, went through it. You know, the GT40 shit that we got going on. We got that upper upper intake stuff that we want to do. But I think I want to do that upper intake stuff with a tuned car. Now, like I said, we've been doing GT40 shit here on the channel for years, right? And with the black car, we've went really fast with some GT40 junkyard stuff. And we were, I wouldn't say one of the first ones, but we were early on when on three was first kind of making its move in the turbo in the Fox by turbo world, we kind of got the kid a little bit early and we've done some really crazy shit with it. I, matter of fact, I think the black car is on their website as one of the cars that go down the track, which is pretty awesome, but it's got a couple hundred thousand views, whatever 60 second video it going like 10 thirties or 10 forties or something like that. A lot of 10 second passes in that car with that shit. So we're going to take that tune that we got in our laptop that we stored from years ago. And I think we're just going to stuff the tune into a binary editor, put the old A9L in. And we got one of these uh, old school pieces I want to show you guys. <laughs> so 
We got one of our old A9Ls that we had fixed from the white car. And then we got this. Now, if I remember correctly, Dad's car has a mass air uh, harness already in it. But, and I, I think it's already been converted. But we got this old ass plug, if you guys remember this one. Um, yeah, here we go. It's a, mo it's a motor sports thing. Convert your 87, 88. I think this even works. Does this work on 86s? I don't remember. It could, this is old school plug, man. Ford Motorsport. It, it goes right in between your ECU and it plugs into your uh, stock harness and does all the changeover for you. So you can convert your speed density car to mass air. Pretty cool. So in case my dad's car wasn't already converted, which I think it was, I mean, it's just a simple plug a math in, plug this computer in, and write a tune real quick, plug it in and start the damn car. I think it'll be close. I think, uh, you know, we got to put 42s in, take the FMU off, put 42s in, which we have just cleaned the other day. So there's a reason why we're bringing dad's car in here. We're gonna push. We're gonna push the GT40 stuff a little bit. See what it does on the dyno. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, my dad was talking this this past year how he didn't really get a chance to to enjoy his car too too much because the speed density was not adjusting fuel trims. So obviously, it kind of ran like shit sometimes, and he would stall at the red lights. And I don't want that to have to happen. You know, I want to set my dad's car up to where he can actually go out and enjoy it and take all these damn silly gauges and shit off of it and just put the wide pipe on it and put, you know, it's already got tails on it and just have him enjoy it. And then once in a while, we'll take it out to the track and bust its ass. We'll have a little bit of fun. So the carbon stock 210 is pure madness. Not to mention LSA and how that off offsets the calculations. Let me go back. Start to notice some patterns in the existing cam specs. Guesstimate the duration in these small blocks. But, but yeah, so that's what we're doing with the GT40 stuff. Um, that's why it's here in the in the shop. Runs like a clock. Got a video coming out this week where we shake dad's car down. Had a couple issues with it. We'll talk about it. But all in all, it was a really cool ride. Um, I think that's going to be a little bit of footage that we can do on top of the mufflers that we're doing with the black car because we got a cam sh camshaft to change. We got some mufflers to mess around with. So we got some content we can do and keep you guys interested on top of the racing shit that we're doing with the white car. You know, once again, we're, we're going to be pushing pretty hard in the coupe once we get settled in. Um, so that'll be the, the stuff that we're doing this year. I mean, there's a lot of it. So you buckle in. Putting GT40 P heads on a Fox stock bottom end. Do I need different size push rods? Yes. So stock G, uh, GT40, excuse me, stock push rods in a in a Fox body six two five. What I the problem I ran into with my dad's car is we had decked the block and we had cut the heads. So naturally the push rods aren't going to be correct. So what I ended up going with like a, a custom uh, trick flow. 6.35 inch uh, push rod. And the nice thing about hydro lifters is they'll be able to adjust. There's probably like 80 to a hundred thousands, you know, clearance inside of a hydro lifter where it has oil. So, you know, you have a little bit of play there. Unlike a solid roller, there's no play at all. In limited travels, there's only like 25 thousands. So 30 thousands at the most. So it cuts it in, you know, it's like a third clearance. And what I mean by clearance is there's just room for, adjustability and that's really what's kind of nice about high hydraulic roller is it's pretty forgiving with the valve train but if the push rods are just too short then you know i think you can i want to say you can shim the rockers too i don't think i've ever done that i think i just bought push rods what's up roberto good to see you wait until a minivan shows you two <laughs> that's right so i hope that helps you what else we got? Suspension pieces on the floor. Yes. We got a couple items this week that we're going to be installing on the white car. I wanted to show you guys here. 
Now, I'm going to get into a little bit of shit with box bodies and how it applies to stock box bodies. There's some stuff that can be hidden inside of your car. Like, you need to pay attention to your control arms. Like, we race our car pretty, uh, pretty hardcore, right? The white one. And we ended up finding a chunk of our control arm on the floor. So after further inspection, found out that one of our heim joints came loose. Like it literally is broke right here. There's a chunk missing out of it on both sides on the uppers. And, you know, we had been beating the snot out of that white car for a number of years. And we never, you know, we always nut bolt check our car. We always check our heim joints. But you 100%. You know, in, it, it's kind of a safety thing. If your car, and I noticed it today in my dad's car, and I, we're going to have to go through it in the rear axle soon. If your car is kind of like shaking and moving all over the place under power, probably a good chance that your damn bushings are broken. Now, if there's a packing, you is the bushings, and you can see, they just get tore up. Now, these were the weight jackers that were in my black car. And obviously, it's spherical on one end or heim joint, whatever. But those bushings get all broke up. Now, I can almost promise you that pretty much if you have the stock control arms in your car, I don't give a damn how, how many miles are on it. It's got dry rotting happening for sure. And then, you know, the axle will move all over the damn place. And if, depending on how much power you got to the wheels, you could even bend your control arm bolts. Not likely, but possible. And I've uh, I've taken some some control arms out of some of these cars I drive. A black car is one was just completely destroyed. It's usually the uppers that take the most abuse, to be honest with you. But we found some suspension. I mean, we found these little couple pieces on the floor, and I actually showed some pictures on Facebook, and it was just crazy how uh, you know something like that can pull apart at two G's and put me right into a wall. So I wanted to apply not only the, the racing part of it, but the like stock part of it. Cause I always try to make application. Like this doesn't matter if I make a thousand, you make a thousand wheel or you make 200 wheel, like those control arm bushings and those spherules, um, they just need to be checked like all the time. I um, mean, you know, cause it's, it's a safety thing. So I did want to mention that tonight on the channel to make sure that, you know, I'm always trying to help people out. So, yeah, I bent so many of them. That was 100% the truth. Judging by the uh, front end coming up on that car, I could imagine how many you bent, brother. <laughs> so, what you guys working on? Talk to me. Um, we've got one more thing we're going to show on the channel. That we're going to be installing, but I don't think I'm going to put this in a video because it really doesn't matter. But... Uh, good front coilovers for SM95. Viking. It's kind of funny you, you just mentioned that. Motion Race Works. Highly recommend them. They have some really good shit. So we bought... It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. They always send me like these little suckers. You do that to everybody? It's creepy. So we bought some chains. Probably like, what the hell is this stuff? I know you guys already know. So you guys in race already know what this stuff is. So I will weld these to the I will weld these to the control arm. I think that's how it works. I don't know which side it is. Yeah. And this will get bolted to the frame. At some point, somewhere. And this is a. Yeah. We're trying to limit the travel. So these are travel limiters. As you guys know, we try our, our car travels pretty good. Like on a back half uh, on the street, whatever. We got the car suspension set up pretty good. So what we're going to start doing is we're going to travel limit the top of the actual strut. 
and you can see here, you can adjust it. So I can actually come down and take, you know, two or three inches out of my travel on a good front half. And, you know, you know, instead of it being wasted energy, maybe we can get our 60 foot down into the low twenties again. And, uh, you know, take advantage of the traction versus taking advantage of the travel. So like in racing, being able to have travel on your front end could help you on multiple surfaces, you know, the street, you know, back half and back of the track stuff, uh, low prep stuff. Whereas if you limit the travel on the front half stuff on the tree side, you can take advantage of the energy. So yeah, motion is quality. That's for sure. That's what we got our whole CO2 thing from motions race words. Good front coilovers, uh, Viking, just like I mentioned, the Crusaders are always really good. We got SN95 ones in ours, the J303s. They're valved for uh, travel or whatever you want to call it. Just finished a trans brake valve body in my C4 so I can launch like stick guys. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Is it anything like that damn pitcher? That's pretty fire. So what else is good? We're about an hour in. Um, let me know what you guys need. You, you know, talk some tech shit. You guys need. Uh... <laughs> I don't want y'all saying I need that banner. So, all right, we'll give it away right now. Hashtag Tremic. We'll let it run for a minute. It is for the six foot garage swag. Beat him with a stick. Pretty nice. This is the last one we'll have probably for a couple weeks at least. Maybe we'll do another giveaway. Maybe maybe Hamlin will give me a certificate of some sort. So if you're interested in the banner, hashtag Tremec. Big shout to Mike Kidd and Tremec for the for the banner given away here on the channel. New fuel system for the 347 Ford Strokers in, is building. Won't be ready till July. Got a new TKX from Hanlon waiting for the workbench. All right, nice. Looks like you're ready to go, Chris. Volvo power steering pump is like something that I'm interested in when the in the coupe with the twins on the Coyote. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm about to do a transmission swap, looks like. <laughs> What's your thoughts on Mega Squirt? I don't think I've ever I've not I've never really messed with it. So I do have chat lag, guys. So if I'm not getting to some of your questions, I apologize. Yeah, a little over uh I've ran an N41. I haven't ran a Lunati. Which trick flow top end would you go with the stock bottom end? Um, 170s and track heat. Uh, I wouldn't go with a box R unless it was a a, a big win, a big inch, you know, Windsor, uh, 351, 357, 95 deck. Um, probably just a track heat. 170s you can go one night i'd probably go 190s i mean you can grow into 190s you know what i'm saying There's, they have 11 r's too that are pretty good can't be you can't beat trick flow stuff i mean it, it works for so many different occasions best thing to do is to call them up you know they're the, everybody that works at tremic is or excuse me at, at trick flow are very knowledgeable guys for sure working on my 83 capri 98 lx GT40P heads and GT40 intake, pull them out of the junkyard. That's what I'm talking about. How well was that? How well was that N41 in the street below 2000? I didn't have a problem with it. Stick shift is for men. That dude should automatically win. <laughs> That's pretty dope. <laughs> That's funny. <sighs> All right, we'll let that run for another minute. 
I'm not going to be on too much more longer, guys. So if you guys got questions, you want to ask me real quick. Got some really cool videos coming up. We picked up another car, like I mentioned earlier. So we're going to have this video coming up. That thing is a hot mess. Wait till you see that thing. What else we got coming up this week? Um, this is like the first start of my dad's car. You hear it? <laughs> Look at all the dust. I was mad, man. It was so so dirty. <laughs> so we got that coming up this uh this week. So here I'm gonna spin through and find us a winner. Find us a winner. Like went too far. And it would be hang on a second. You're killing me, Brandon. You're killing me. <laughs> Trying to spin through. Gabe Large. Gabe. You don't have this? You don't have this banner, Gabe? You don't have a Tronic one? Hmm. <laughs> Killing it. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you, Brandon. Don't worry about it. We got you covered, bro. We got you covered. Congrats, Gabe Large. I don't know why I got some serious chat lag here. What's up, Roy? See, I'm seeing the right chat on the other screen, but not on my uh, stream yard. It always happens at about an hour. That's why I try to do it before the hour. Hmm. I'm in New York, Finger Lakes. Are you what? Are you what? I will send you my TI. What? Tune log? Oh, tune. Over an hour, no freeze, right? Now now it's gonna freeze, bro. <laughs> yeah, Gabe, just send me a just send me a message, bro. Just let me know where you uh where you want me to send this out. Couldn't have been more deserving right there. Gabe's been killing a stick shift game for 30 years. 20 years, 30 years. I don't know, Gabe. You've been at it a long time. He's actually going to be competing in the – Virgil's got a um, nightmare on your street. Virgil – was it Clance? I think I don't want to butcher his last name. Has a big stick shift thing coming up. I guess uh, Atkins is going to that, who has Grubworm. So it's going to be pretty interesting to watch some of that. I'm pretty sure it'll be live, so. Excuse me. There is lag. I don't know. I got chat lag everywhere. I don't understand why. Working on my Mustang, my engine, trans starter, alternator, ignition. Nice. Getting that shit done. Getting it off the jack stands. Guys, I'm always talking that, man. It's just you got to stay motivated and get your car off the jack stands. You know, I try to keep all my cars running here on the channel. It's never, you know, everyone's like, well, I'm just waiting for the right time. I mean, you know, right time to me is right now. You know what I mean? So. Like it, I don't have, you know, I'll, I'll put a, I'll put something together and take it apart. Put something together and take it apart. I, I guess it doesn't really. It's not very good, but you know, at least it's not sitting there for you know, because you never know what happened. Like you'll you, something will come up and you'll have to spend time away from the garage where you can't get the shit ready, and then you forget what you're at and forget what you're doing. That's why I always say write the shit down. But I just mainly wanted to come, you know, come online tonight. And uh, hang out with y'all. Talk a little shit. 
what you guys want to talk about next week? Like, you guys want to do a – you want you guys want to bust out the whiteboard? What you want to do? I was thinking about going through some of the uh, top ten hazards of the Fox body, um, top five mods, junkyard mods, where to find them, what you guys want to talk about. How hard is it to change out the input shaft in a 94 or 95 V65 to a Fox body? It's easy. So the 9495 V6 T5, it doesn't have the top sensor for the neutral safety switch. That's a problem, number one. Number two, I think you can just swap out. The, I think it's nine and a quarter inch long. I think that's the, the, the Fox body length. The problem is, I think you have to use the 05. You know what? They're the same. Yeah, you just change the input. They're the same 23 too, so never mind. I would suggest, if you're going to do that, let somebody do it that knows what they're doing because they could take the input shaft out without opening the box up if they know what they're doing. Like It has to be up on its face, up on its nose, because there's a bunch of needle bearings inside. And you could pull the input shaft out, which will... You know, if you're careful, the shit won't drop into your case. You know what I mean? You'll be all right. Drink more water, less beer. Top five junkyard mods is always a big one. I agree. Front suspension. So I've owned my blue car 34 years. I got it back in 90. Was it is your coupe blue or I thought it was silver? Wiring stuff, specifically fuel system, possibly. Quite a few probably haven't seen the upgrade. So what we could, what I could actually do, you know what I thought about doing was pulling out some of my old videos just like that, the wiring upgrade one, and going through the video with, with you guys live. Like, I think that would be kind of like, it's like a 45-minute long video, and I can kind of explain in better detail, some of the stuff that's going on. It kind of, yeah, that's a, that's a really good idea, MJP. It's a really good idea. Because the wiring upgrade is a must. Shit is a must. How hard is it to change the tail shaft seal in bushing? Leaking transmission fluid from the shaft where the T5 is. So when your yoke wears out, your bushing wears out, it relies on the seal to keep the transmission fluid in, which doesn't normally happen. You start to get drips. You have to take the whole tail shaft off. But the nice thing is, is it's eight bolts in a, in a, in a, in a, a cotter pin. So, or not a cotter pin, but uh, in, a, in a pin. So it won't be that hard. So you guys got questions, hit me up with them before I leave. Just bought a T5 from Hanlon. What would be a good transmission fluid to run? I know there's a lot of options. Dex 3. T5s or T5s. It doesn't matter if they were built in 90 or built in 2024. Dex 3. Now, you can get into the boozy shit with the Royal Purples and spend all this extra money on extra oils. No. Dex 3. It's what I run in Dad's T5 that whines. I don't give a damn. It's what I run in the TK. I run Sacro Mesh in the TKX now, but I broke it in with Dex 3. The first 200 miles and a bunch of track passes were on Dex 3. So just run that. It'll be fine. Some people will disagree with that, but it is what it is. Would be good more to talk about viable engine swaps with today's av available engines. I just saw Fox with a 01 Mach 1 swap. You're talking about like a four valve? So many options now. Yeah, it's kind of what we talked about last week, too, with the uh, 408 Coyote shit, because we weren't really sure what we were going to do with the coupe. I want to put the coupe on the road right now, and I know that if I put everything that's in that white car back there in my coupe, I know I can be even more competitive. But sometimes when shit works, you leave it alone, and that's why the Holly Terminator X didn't go into white car until at the end of the year last year, and it's... There's something to be said about that. Like, and it's, it, it's kind of a learning thing from it, not only for myself, but what I can do here on the channel. It's just like, sometimes you don't fool with shit. Like if it works, it works. You got upgrades for it. Great. Wait until it's not working or make till it's time to do it. 
So I guess the point I'm trying to make is that's what I wanted to do with the coupe was do the do the 408 in there. But, you know, we decided to do a twin turbo junkyard coyote. And there's just so many different options now at this point. And you're right. Like, which one's the more viable option? Like, it'd almost be better to talk about 302 versus 351 again when it comes to viable options, because there really is a lot. The gray silver car is Gerard's. You actually made it past it. So the one you bought to uncaged wasn't your car? GT40Ps are getting harder to find in the yard now. Plus, it's getting harder to sell them in the intakes. Guess less and less Fox bodies are on the road for that reason. Now, I don't think it's that. I just think that people. You know, I think it's more engine swaps than it is anything. Like, you don't see a lot of people putting GT40 heads on 351. So you see people that are switching to a 351 or a Coyote swap. That's the step up from a 30282 deck outside of a 363, which, you know, those motors are, or those blocks alone are two to three grand. You know, unless you specifically want to build a 363, which is a, it's a monster motor for an 82 deck. You know, people are, I think, are just naturally going to the, you know, hate to say it, but they're going to the LS for like a lot of racing. Um, they're going to the 351 builds, like 408s and 427s. And, you know, you have the Coyote swap. So, you know, see a lot of, you know, GT40 still has its place. It can see you can still make good power. We're about to make, we're about to revisit old school shit with dad's blue car, like we did with the black car. And the, we've done it on this channel for 15 years. So we're going to go back to some GT40 shit with some mass air and some binary editor. And my goal is to make 500 wheel on dad's car through a T5. Because I know it'll handle it. It'll be fine. T56 Magnum max wheel horsepower. Depends on weight. It depends on clutch. You don't see Magnums get broken very often. Let's just put it that way. And I got plenty of friends that are make four digit plus that are on a Magnum. Plus we make close to it. <clears throat> Ish. I'm interested in building the 387 for my Ranger. So that's a video that we're also going to be doing in the future as well as I'm going to do a contemplation of all of the things that I've done with the 387. And just like I said here on the channel earlier, like, if you really want to build a 387, I suggest you maybe just, just get just get a piston. Just just bore it 30 over. The chances of finding a 351 with a really good standard bore are already slim one in three. So, and it being roller on top of that to save the cam, you know, not having to run link bars. I mean, just go 30 over. Just go 30 over, pick a piston, unless you find a set of 302s cheap. You know, you can find you can put 302 forged pistons in a 393. You just got to find them. Find somebody selling them. I need to get to Hodo Hanna. Yeah, he sells the Inlands, I think. He sells a couple couple different companies. So, anyways, got a couple more minutes here and we're going to head out. Like I said, this week we got the we shook dad's car down a little bit. We did a little we did a little ride along with that and talk about some plans that we just talked about here on the channel. Got some other things we're going to be adding to it that I didn't mention. Uh, got a cam cam swap coming soon. We're not going to be doing that that this week, but um, we're going to head back to the dyno with the black car. But not it's not what you think. Um, got some shit to put on. Oh, we picked up we picked up his parts car. You guys got to see this car, man. Got this day and age, if you can find a good roller, if you're just now getting into the Fox body, this is what we're going to pitch later in the week. If you're just now getting into the Fox body genre, okay, you want to race your car, you want to take it to the coach car shows, the, 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 the pits and the, the Fox Toberfest and the, you know, four takeovers or whatever. You want to build this dream Fox body. Start with a good shell. In this video that I got coming up this week, we're going to go over what, what you may not see. If you're just now getting into the, to, to the cars, 
we're going to show you some really bad scenarios on this car that you're going to want to look at. And it's going to definitely be useful if you don't know a whole lot about Fox bodies. If I was going to buy a Honda or a Ford diesel truck, like an older one or stuff that I'm not familiar with, this type of knowledge and this type of, you know, understanding of what I'm looking at, where to look for it, it's just worth its weight in gold. So I think that's the way we're going to pitch that video this week. You know, there's so many different, you know, my buddy Jeff is a GM guy who I bought the car from. Super nice guy, has a lot of really fast GM shit. Figured he could get this Fox body home, get an engine from somebody and just flip it and make a little bit of money for his Firebird. But as soon as he got his fingers on the car, it was a hot mess. And he didn't really know where to look, look until he actually got it home and somebody showed him. And he was like, damn, this is really bad. So I think I'm going to make it a teaching moment. I think it'll be okay. So I sent you a pass from today in Messenger if you want to share it here. And I don't know if I can even grab that yet. Let me look. Hmm. Trying to switch over. Hold on. I don't think I can share it. I can't share that from there. I'll have to download it, Gabe. But I'll definitely share it for sure. What's up, Super Dave? Good to see you, bro. Is a carb coyote any good? I don't think so. I think there's variable timing that's involved that you need to take advantage of. Anyway. All right, guys. That's pretty much all I got for you. Like I said, we got a couple videos coming up this week. Uh, it's been It's been super busy here in the shop. Um, I'm sorry if I haven't answered uh, very many chat messages recently. Just been super busy trying to get shit ready for for the season. We got uh, we got an elite eight coming up that we uh, I just did a video, not a video, but I just did a uh, I just put put together a race at the end of April. We're gonna do some quarter mile shit with some you know some eight second cars. Um, we got I got a no prep coming up in a couple of weeks. It's the kickoff to the season. Um, it's gonna be pretty fire. I'm looking forward to that. Got a lot of work to do. And, you know, I'm always preaching here on the stand. You know, it ain't no excuse. You know, you, you got to, you got to, I got to write the shit down. I got it wrote down, not specifically in any order, but I'm over here messing around with dad's car when I should be putting the heim joints on my damn white car. I'm just trying to get content here for the channel, trying to keep you guys, you know, trying to keep you guys interested. And I appreciate everybody who who comes in here on live stream and uh, talks a little Fox body shit with me. So. Anyways, uh, have a good night, Encore. Good to see you, man. Anyways, um, I hope I, uh, you know, I'm always preaching, get your shit off the jack stands. Make a plan, guys. Time, money, family. Make a plan. Make that shit happen. Get out there in the garage. Write stuff down on a whiteboard like I do. I do that for a reason because that's just the way it works. You know, we got whiteboards here that we talk about when we're doing a transmission swap or when we're doing a turbo kit or whatever. You know, you know, check, 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 run a line through it, be done with it. So stay uh stay motivated, guys. Keep your cars straight, get your shit out the jack stands. I appreciate everybody for joining us tonight. I will see you in the videos this week. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Have a good night.